Hey everybody, Rob here at eTrailer.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the Aries Action Track Motorized Running Boards on our 2019 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. Now having running boards on your Jeep is going to be really nice for two different reasons. It's going to make it easier for us to get in and out of our Jeep, but at the same time it's going to allow us to give our own style to our Jeep. Now I know a lot of people, when they look at some running boards, they may think, well, this is sitting so close to the door, it's not really beneficial, because we're not really gaining a whole lot having to lift your leg up that high. But that's a really nice thing about our Aries Action Track. As soon as we open the door, a second step is gonna deploy out of the step, now making it a lot easier whether we're getting in or out of our Jeep. And whenever we close the door, the steps are going to retract back up so we can drive away safely and not worry about anything hanging down. And on the second step below that, as well as the other step right above it, there's going to be built-in tread. Now the nice thing about the fact that it's built into the board means that we're never going to have to replace it because it wore out. And since the tread goes along the entire length of the board, we're going to have a secure footing whether it's wet, snowy, or anything else like that, or if our shoes just happen to be a little muddy. Another feature that I really like, whenever our steps deploy, we're going to have an LED light that's going to illuminate the area underneath the step. That way we can have confidence and a secure footing even at nighttime. Now our steps are also going to have a lot of safety features built in. Obviously the door's open so the steps are out, but if we have somebody hanging out on the back of our Jeep and they got their foot on the step and we close our door, the steps are going to realize that something is on the steps themselves and that the motor is going to stop. So it's not going to burn up the motor. Now they are going to be stuck in that position until we open the door and close it again. But it's also going to work the same way on the extending. So if we have somebody standing really close to the steps and somebody happens to open the door, you can see that they will come out a little bit, but once it realizes there's something there, it's going to stop the motor and prevent it from burning up. And again, it may come down a little bit, to, but to have it fully retract or extend, we're going to have to cycle the door closing it and then reopen it. Now this is a Jeep and a lot of us take our Jeeps off road. Typically there's going to be some rough terrain, maybe some rocks or anything like that that's going to be around and we don't necessarily want our steps to come out every time we open the door because there may be a rock, a log or something that can cause a lot of damage. Well Aries took that into mind and they provide us with a power switch so we can actually turn the steps off. Just keep in mind that once we turn that switch into the off position, the steps are going to stay wherever they're at. So right now the steps are down. If I were to turn that off and close the door, the steps are gonna stay extended. So it's gonna make it really nice in those off-road situations or any situation where you want your steps to stay retracted where they won't get damaged. Turn the switch off. And now you can see when I open the door, they're not gonna extend out. But if I close the door, turn the switch back on, the steps are gonna cycle through and then we can open them up and they're gonna act like normal. They're gonna extend when we open the door and retract when we close it. Another time that that switch is going to come in handy is when we need the steps extended and we don't want them to retract when we close the door. This way I can actually climb up on the steps and I can get on top of my Jeep if I have anything mounted up here like a bike rack, cargo carrier, or maybe a basket or anything like that. It's just going to make it a lot easier to get up here. Our steps are going to be made out of aluminum and they're going to have a black powder coat finish which not only is going to help resist any kind of corrosion but it's also going to help blend in with the bottom of our Jeep and just look really nice pretty much on any color. Now since they are made out of aluminum it is going to be a little bit easier to install them because they're not as heavy as steel but they're actually going to be super strong. These are actually going to have up to a 650 pound weight capacity which is a lot more than most running boards. Now the top step or the main housing for our steps is going to be a total of 70 inches long and it's going to be four and a half inches wide. But you can see it fits very nicely in between the wheel wells on our Jeep and it really looks like it's made for this car. Now our lower step is obviously going to be a little bit smaller because it is going to have to fit inside the main housing. But the lower step is going to be 54 and a half inches long by three and a half inches wide. And just to give you a perspective of how low it's going to be extending out, we're going to get about eight inches from the top of our step to the main housing up here. Now again, since this is a Jeep, a lot of us want to take the doors off. That's one of the big benefits of having a Jeep. 
Now, if you think about it, how are our steps going to retract and extend if we don't have a door? Well, there is a kit that is sold separately that's going to be a door delete kit, so you can manually operate the steps while enjoying your Jeep without the doors on it. But the kit we have here, the way it's going to work is we're going to have a door sensor that's going to be mounted to the door jam, and it's going to be looking for a signal so that it knows when the door is open and closed. And that sensor is going to be looking for this magnet. The magnet is going to be mounted on the door side and the sensor on the jam. So whenever the magnet passes in front of the sensor, it'll know the door is closed. And whenever it's gone, it knows the door is open. Now, when it comes to the installation, the boards are going to be extremely straightforward to get on. We're just going to have a few brackets that will be custom made for our Jeep. And then we're going to mount the boards to those brackets. Now, as far as the wiring goes, it is a little bit more involved. And I understand a little, some people may get a little nervous about that. But the nice thing about these steps is that every connection we're going to make already has a pre-installed connector on it. So we're not going to have to cut, splice, or do anything like that. And there's no drilling involved. We're simply just going to have to run the wires and plug it in. In fact, let's go and walk you through the steps of how to get these installed so you have the confidence to do it at home. To begin our installation, we need to remove our factory running boards or rock sliders or whatever we have on our Jeep at the time. Now, if you don't have anything, you can skip this step, but if you do have the running boards on there, we'll give you a quick overview of how to take them off. We'll start by coming to the front, and if we look underneath the running board, we can find that support bracket that's bolting it to our Jeep. So at the bottom of the support here, if we follow it all the way in until we hit the frame and we look up, we'll find a bolt that's holding it to the body there. But at the same time, if we go all the way up to the body and then come outward, we'll find that we're going to have a couple studs, one on each side of that support bracket itself. So you want to grab a 10 millimeter socket to remove the nuts off the studs here. Again, there'll be one on each side. And once you have those removed, you're gonna to wanna to grab a extension and a 13 millimeter socket, and we'll pull out the bolt that's going into the bottom of the body here. Now those are going to be all the bolts that are holding it to the Jeep, so we just want to go back, finding all the support brackets on there. There should be three of them. We'll have one in the front, one in the center, and one at the back. But they're all going to use those three same type of mounting locations and size of hardware, so we're going to pull all of those out. Once you have all your hardware removed, you do kind of want to have a grip on the board. It's not going to fall off but we don't want it to fall on us on accident. At that point, everything loose, we kind of want to lift upward just a little bit and then pull out, and we can set the board aside where it won't get damaged. Now that the Jeep's ready, we can grab the brackets that we're going to be mounting on our Jeep so the board can mount up. Now I'd like to go over the locations of each bracket because they are very similar, and we need to make sure we have the correct bracket in the front, in the center, and in the rear. So our front bracket, this is what it's going to look like. Now, the center bracket's going to look almost identical. So the easiest way you can tell if it's the front bracket is if you look at this kind of angled section here, there's a really small notch. If that notch is there, that means it's the front bracket. So we'll place this one just towards the front. Now, if we come to the center and we look at this bracket, again, extremely similar to the front bracket, but in that notch, we don't have that little cutout. And if you hold the front and center section together, you'll notice that this angled piece here is just slightly longer. So the longest arm is going to go towards the center. Now the back bracket, that one's probably going to be the easiest to figure out it's the rear. Because it's going to have this square hole and a couple small little notches in there. This one's going to look a little bit different than the rest of them, so it will be easier to figure out which one's the rear. So we'll start by mounting our front bracket. We'll take the bracket and that section that kind of has that curve to it and little tab sticking up, that needs to go towards the outside and the slotted hole is gonna to go towards the inside. 
These little wings here that have the two small holes in them, those are going to line up where we removed those two studs from our running boards. So we can just kind of lift our bracket up like this. This is how it should sit in place. I'm going to grab one of the black bolts out of our kit. I'm going to pass it through the bracket, going all the way through the hole. I'll grab two of them, so we'll do it for each side. Then on the back side, we're going to follow up each one of those bolts with a flat washer. And then we're just going to loosely secure it with a nylon lock nut. That's going to be the same combination for the other side bolt holding our bracket on as well. So we'll slide our washer and nut in place. And right now we just need to get these hand tight just so the bracket's not moving too much. But then where we had our bolt going directly into the body, we're going to grab one of the new bolts out of our kit, follow it up with a split lock washer, and then finally a flat washer. Now before you thread this bolt into the body, they want us to use a little bit of anti-seize on the threads. Now they are going to provide it for you, so we don't have to pick anything up, but you just want to make sure you put at least a little bit on the threads before we thread it in, that we don't have to worry about the bolt seizing up, getting corroded, or anything like that inside. Now again, we just need to get these in there hand tight. We don't really need to crank on them too much. We just want to make sure everything's loosely secure to our Jeep. But now that our front bracket's in place, we're going to repeat that process for the middle and rear brackets using the same combination of hardware. Now there is a passenger and a driver's side board, so you want to make sure you grab the appropriate one. So we're on the passenger side, and the way you're going to know if you have the correct one is we're going to have the Aries label that should be going towards the front of our Jeep. Now if we flip our board over and we look towards the bottom, kind of the back side, we're going to have this pigtail that has a red and yellow wire. That should be towards the back of the Jeep. Now if we also come in a little closer, we're going to see that the back of the board towards the bottom has two different channels in it. One's going to be kind of a slanted channel, and then one's going to be a straight up and down channel. You'll see that it's got that little channel in there. We want to grab our stud plates. It's basically just going to be this little plate, a couple notches on there, and it'll have two studs coming out. I'm going to come to the very end of the board and we're going to slide it into that channel. And these are what's going to actually attach the board to those brackets. So we kind of want to get them close to the locations. So we're going to have one in the front, one in the center, and one in the back. You want to make sure you slide all three of those plates in place. Again, we'll just slide them in a rough position of where they're going to go. Now the open channel that we haven't used yet, this is actually going to sit on our brackets. So if we come up and look at our brackets, how we have that little wing that sticks out, our boards are going to come over and kind of hook onto that, and then the studs are going to rotate down and go into these notches. So I do suggest getting an extra set of hands. The boards aren't that heavy, but they're going to be really close to the Jeep, so you want to be careful. We'll get the top section hooked in, and then we can actually just manually move those T-bolts to where they're going to line up. And once we have all three of them lined up and everything's in place, should be able to let the board rotate and rest on the brackets like this. Now before I put any hardware on to really secure the board down, I like to make sure it's going to be positioned where I want it. Now you may notice that if you grab your board, you're really not going to be able to slide it. But if we lift up just a little bit and kind of tilt it away from our Jeep, we'll be able to slide the board a lot easier. And again, you just kind of want to line it up, get a reference point, that way we can make the other side to match this side as well. Now that we have our board centered and positioned the way we want, you want to make sure that those T-bolts are coming through the bracket there. Once they are, we're going to follow up each stud with a flat washer, and we're going to grab a lock nut and again, right now we're just going to loosely secure it so we don't have to worry about the board moving, shifting around, or falling. Now before we put the nut and bolt on our rear bracket on the forward side, we want to make sure we grab our light bracket. Now it's just going to be an L shape, it'll have a notched hole and a round hole. We want to put the round hole over the stud coming out of the bracket. We'll follow it up with that same flat washer 
and lock nut, just like we did with all the other ones. But we want to make sure we put this bracket in first because that's what's going to hold our light. Now there is no proper way to have it put in, but our light's going to slide in here and it'll be projecting the light outward. So I always like to point my bracket kind of towards the front, but also coming towards the ground. So it's kind of at an angle so we can get that light to flood as much of the steps in this area as we can. Then we can grab that 13 millimeter socket, get our bracket loosely in place in the position we want. And then just tighten up that nut. Now, if we find that the position's not a good spot, we can always go back, loosen it up, and move the bracket once we have the light in place. Now, each one of these T-bolts, the studs on them is gonna get the same combination of hardware. So we'll go through and secure down the rest of our brackets. I'm gonna come back with a 13 millimeter socket and snug up all those lock nuts that we just put on. Now you do want to make sure you come back and you're going to torque all the hardware down to the specified amount in the instructions. We'll go back and repeat that for any remaining hardware we have. And with this side complete, we're going to repeat that entire process over on the driver's side. At this point, we want to grab our small harness out of our kit. Now the small harness will have a fuse holder with a red wire on it a black wire, and then on the other end, we're gonna have two of these bullet style connectors. We wanna make sure that we pull out that fuse out of the fuse holder. We obviously wanna hold on to it, but we don't wanna have it in there because we're actually gonna be hooking this up to the battery now, but we don't wanna have any kind of short, so we'll pull the fuse out so no electricity will be going through. We'll come directly to the battery under the hood. And we'll start by removing the cover on the positive post. We want to hook up the red wire that has the fuse holder to the positive terminal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually slide the ring terminal through the cover on the battery. That way it'll kind of keep everything looking neat. We don't have to worry about any kind of interference. We'll slide it through so we can get it to come out and start making our connections at the battery. Now you may notice that the ring terminal that's pre-installed is a little bit small to go on a couple of these studs. So you want to make sure you use the one closest to the back of the Jeep because it will fit over that one. So we can grab a 10 millimeter socket or we'll remove the nut. We can just slide our ring terminal over the stud. Then we can replace the nut and tighten it up. And since we went through, we can just slide that cover right back in place. Now for our black wire, that's gonna hook directly to the negative side of our battery. So again, we'll grab that 12 millimeter, loosen up the nut, slide our ring terminal over, and reinstall the nut. Now our two bullet style connectors, we need to get these into the cabin of our Jeep. So we're gonna run ours along the firewall towards the driver's side, and then I'll show you how we're gonna get them inside. So we went ahead and routed that harness along the firewall, and we just used these supports to kinda of go underneath and hold everything in place. Now if we come to the very corner of the firewall towards the driver's side, if we look down right next to our brake booster, you'll find this round plug down there. Now that's gonna be a really easy way to get into the cab of our Jeep where we don't have to drill any holes. But keep in mind, this is gonna be a plug if you have an automatic because that would be where the master cylinder and the clutch would be. So if you have a manual, this plug's not gonna be there. But we're gonna go ahead and pull that plug out. You use a pick, flathead screwdriver, whatever you have, but you wanna make sure you hold on to it because we are gonna reuse it and plug this hole back up. So here's that plug. It's just a plastic plug, should be able to twist it a little bit, it'll pop out. But 
once we have it out, you can look down and you can see a nice large access hole so we can get inside. So we just want to take our wires and we'll pass them through the opening until they go all the way into the Jeep. We'll take all that slack and make sure we push it into the opening and then we'll move inside so we can find the slack and pull it through. And again, for now, we're just gonna hold on to this plug because once we have everything installed, we can always go back and cut a slit. That way we can put the wiring in the center and use some silicone to seal up the hole. So our wires popped out underneath our dash. Most likely they're gonna be in the corner by your pedals. For now, we can go ahead and just leave these here but we do need to go ahead and pull out all the floor mats for the front and back. And then we wanna go ahead and pull the panels loose that are gonna be by the side of the door and the threshold so we can get underneath the carpet and help route everything. And to pull these threshold panels up, it is fairly easy. You should be able to just come underneath that panel and just pull upward, kind of work your way from the back going towards the front. Work our way releasing those clips. We have to come back pretty far to release them. But we just want to be able to get underneath here so we can route our wires and hide them. So we're gonna have wires going all through our Jeep. Now it's not completely necessary to get all these panels out. We just want them out of the way or loose enough that we can get our hand in there and tuck some wires in because we did notice that this front panel is gonna be bolted in and really it's not worth all the extra time to take all these fasteners out. We just need enough room to get behind the panels. So with these loose, we're gonna go ahead and move to the back seat and the other side and loosen up the panels along the doors as well. At this point, we can start routing our main harness to all the doors and wherever it needs to go. So we're gonna start by finding the large connector to be the 18 pin connector that has a ton of wires coming out of the back. We wanna start at the rear passenger side and we're gonna leave our connector in this end of the plug pretty close to the bottom of the seat underneath. Now you'll notice if we follow the wiring down, it is gonna Y off and that's because one side's gonna to go to the driver's side and one side's gonna to go to the passenger side. Now the passenger side is much shorter so that's why we're choosing to route our wires starting at the rear passenger because then we know we're going to have enough. But basically, we're going to have these four connectors. Two of these are going to go to the door and two of these are going to go outside and hook up to the actual boards themselves. The connector that has the blue and white wire is going to go to the rear passenger door and the gray and green wire connector is going to go to the passenger front door. And again, like I mentioned, these two wires need to go to the outside. So a good way to get to the outside is if we loosen up this panel at the bottom, we already have it loose, so we just kind of pull it away. And if we lift up the carpet here, we're going to find a plug right at the bottom on the floor of our Jeep. Now typically you can get a screwdriver, a trim panel tool, whatever you have, and we can pull that plug out. Now I know some of you may be wondering, well, how am I gonna get it back in there? You know, I don't wanna have a hole in the bottom of my floor, but they do provide us with a new rubber grommet so it will get plugged back up, don't worry. Just wanna make sure we grab a screwdriver and pop that plug out. And these are glued in there, so it may be a little tough to get them out, but as you can see, just pry them out and they should pop out. Once you have those out, you want to make sure you have the passenger side of the harness. Double check which side the wires are coming from. And then we want to take our two connectors that have the weather sealing on them. And those are going to go down through the hole that we just opened up. Now the connector may be a little bit of a tight fit to get through there. You don't want to damage it. So you just want to be careful when you're pushing these connectors through the hole. Now you may be having some trouble getting those connectors through that hole. What I suggest doing is you can take a file, a step bit, or really anything just to open that hole up a little bit. But keep in mind, you don't want to open it up too much. Just enough to get the connectors through because we do want to put that rubber grommet back in place. 
So once you have your wires coming down from the inside of our Jeep, we're gonna slide that rubber grommet over and it is gonna be a tight fit, but it's rubber so it'll stretch over the connectors. And then we just wanna push it in place, make sure it locks in and it's not gonna come out no matter how much we pull or tug on the wiring. And with the wires coming through, we're gonna have a female connector and a male connector. Now one of the male connectors is gonna plug in directly into that harness at the back of the boards. So you just wanna plug it in, make sure it locks, and give it a quick tug. Now this section of our harness is actually gonna to go towards the lights that are gonna be mounted on the outside of our board. So we can go ahead and grab one of the lights out of our kit. And you wanna loosen the nut up that's on the light to where it comes all the way off that stud and it's just kinda of hanging on the wire. We'll slide the wire in between the small notch on the bracket we mounted earlier. Make sure the threads go all the way through. You just want to slide the nut on back onto the stud and then secure it in just by threading it on. Now for now we just want to get it again real loose and then the two connectors here will match up and we can just plug them in. Now for now, I always like leaving all my wires loose because there may be some slack that's taken back into the Jeep or we may need to pull some down. So for now, we're just gonna go ahead and leave this the way it is and continue to route all of our wires and we can clean everything up at the end. Now we're gonna take the other side where it wise off on our harness. We're gonna pass all of these wires underneath the carpet over to the driver's side. But one thing you do wanna to try to do, it'll help you whenever you're routing your wires, is you wanna to try to keep this 18 pin plug underneath the passenger rear seat. That way again, we have that Y where it Ys off and we wanna make this our central mounting location. So try to keep this as close to underneath the seat here as you route all your wires over to the other side. Now that we have our wires routed over to the driver's side, we went ahead and hooked them up just like we did it on the passenger side. So we should be left with four connectors, two on the driver's side and two on the passenger side that look like this. Now the color wires may be different, but the connectors should look like this. And we should have one short wire and one long wire on each side. The short wire is gonna go to the rear door. So we wanna route this wire along the edge of the carpet here and we want to have our connector come pretty close as close as we can get it without really pulling on anything to the latch mechanism itself so we'll just tuck our wire behind the panel here and you want to leave that connector accessible but again close to the latch mechanism the long wire is going to do the same thing except we're going to route it along the bottom of the threshold till we can get to the front latch and both sides are gonna be the same, so you just wanna tuck it underneath the carpet and the panel here, and then have your connector as close as you can to the latch. Now you also wanna make sure you take the rest of your harness, you should have some spade terminals, ring terminal, and then two more wires that match up to those buck connector style that we had earlier. We wanna route that along the threshold on the driver's side and go towards the driver's seat so we can meet up with all the wires we need to. So at this point, you should have four wires, one by each door latch. Now we wanna grab our sensors, and these are gonna have a matching plug to those. And it doesn't matter which one you grab or which one you plug it into, because they're all gonna work the same. I'm just gonna match them up, make sure it locks into place. And now what I like to do is tuck all that excess wire with the connector behind the carpet. That way it'll be protected a little bit. So I'll just push some of that behind this panel Make sure we still have enough room to have our sensor though. Now our sensor is gonna mount, we wanna mount it as close as we can to the latch mechanism itself. Before we do though, we wanna grab the alcohol wipe out of our kit. We wanna make sure we wipe off the door and the sensor, make sure it's nice and clean. And once we wipe it off, we're gonna grab two of the really small double-sided sticky tapes. It's two really small squares. We'll make sure you grab two of them, and peel the backing off. We'll take one of the squares, we're gonna stick it directly to the back of our sensor. We'll do the same thing for the other one. Make sure 
sure they stick good. We can remove the backing off of the tape. And we're gonna stick it directly to the door. Again, just make sure you leave yourself enough wire. And I like to butt it right against the bottom of that latch mechanism. You just wanna hold it, make sure it seals good, and it's not gonna be moving around on you. You can always come back and tuck all that excess wire away so it gives it a little bit of a cleaner look and helps protect those wires. But that's gonna be the same process that we're gonna do for each door. So just make sure you clean off the sensor in the door before you start sticking everything on. Once you have all your sensors mounted up, then we need to mount the magnet that's gonna activate the sensor. Then we need to move to the door side so we can mount this one up. We know that the sensor on the door jam is right below our latch, so we wanna put the magnet right about the same spot. We wanna get as close as we can. Once we figure it out, we're gonna take the larger piece of double-sided tape, take one of the sides of the backing off, stick it directly to the magnet and take the other side of the backing off then we want to make sure we stick it directly to the door again trying to get it as close as possible so it'll line up with our sensor just want to make sure that it sticks really well and then you can always just gradually close the door kind of look in and make sure that it is going to line up. Now once you do have the magnet and sensor lined up, we're going to repeat that for the other three remaining doors. So at this point we can come back to our harness. Now if you remember, we should still have the harness section that has all the spade terminals, that one ring style terminal, and then the two bullet connectors. Well from the very beginning we ran that power wire in we can go ahead and plug in our bullet connectors into the other ones and you'll notice that the each side is going to have a corresponding connector to it. So we'll have a red one with a female and a male, so we want to make sure we plug the red ones in together. And then we'll plug in the black wires together. Then the other end of our harness here that has all the spade connectors, this is going to need to get routed behind the dash here because this is going to go to our switch that's going to control the power to our boards. Now we're going to be mounting our switch probably over here on the left hand side but you do want to double check make sure there's no other things behind the dash before you start drilling. So we're going to go ahead and pull this panel out on the side so we can look in and see what exactly is back there and if this is going to be a good spot to mount that switch. May need a trim panel tool or something to get that panel loose because it is stuck right behind the door panel here. So we just need to get a trim panel and pop that edge out. And we verify that there's nothing behind our dash in this section. That's going to be on the driver's side right below our headlight switch. Now we need to drill a three quarter inch hole. So most of us aren't going to have a three quarter inch bit, but we will have a step bit. And I just went ahead and made a mark on my step bit to where to stop. So we'll just go ahead and drill into the plastic and stop when we have a three quarter inch hole. Now since it is a step bit, the outer hole here is gonna be the correct size, but obviously on the inside, it tapers down. So we may need to just take a knife or something, kind of shave that excess plastic off on the inside. So we got our wires through the hole we drilled, but you do want to be mindful and still have access to the black wire that has that hook or ring terminal, whatever you want to call it. You want to still be able to access this. Now we can grab our switch. If we look at the back, you'll see it's going to have three terminals on there. We want to hook up both red wires to both of the silver terminals and the black wire is going to go to the gold terminal. But as you can see, it's not going to fit on there. It's the wrong size spade terminal. But in our kit, they are going to give us a jumper wire that'll convert that smaller size to the correct size. So we just take our black jumper wire, plug it into the gold terminal, take the small end, plug it into the other spade. Then we can just simply plug in one of the reds to the silver terminals and the other one into the other one. 
doesn't really matter which one you just want to make sure that both red wires are going to the silver terminals and again that black wire is going to the gold or top terminal on the switch you just want to tuck all that excess wire back inside behind the dash maybe a little bit of a tight fit but push it all the way back in there and these little tabs that are on the switch itself those are going to expand and what's going to give you that pressure to hold it in place so it will be a little bit of a tight fit getting that switch in but that's a good thing because we don't want it to be too loose to where it won't go in a nice press fit in there and it's not going to fall out now if we bring our attention to our other black wire we're going to have a terminal on the end and we're going to need to ground this wire now fortunately for us it is right here by the side and we have a lot of factory bolts that are going into metal so it'll be a really good ground at the top right here so we can grab a 10 millimeter socket probably an extension to make it a little bit easier to access and we'll loosen up that bolt We'll just take the bolt, make sure our terminal goes around it, and we'll just put the bolt back in place. Now since it's not a ring, you may have to hold it while you're tightening it up, just to make sure it doesn't come out. Just make sure that the fork is going around the bolt and it's not just sitting behind the washer. So now we're going to take our brain box. This is going to be what's operating our boards and sending all the signals out. It's going to have a large connector on it that's going to match up with that one that's sitting underneath our passenger seat. So for now, I'm just going to take my plug. I'm going to plug it into the box. Make sure it's connected all the way. And I'm, for now, I'm just going to set my box underneath the seat. So at this point, you want to make sure you close all the doors and we can go ahead and put that fuse in, make sure our steps operate properly. And then we'll take some time, clean up all the loose wires and put all those panels back in place. We can take our fuse. We're going to put it in our fuse holder, make sure it goes all the way in. It's fully seated. Sometimes if the tabs get bent, won't want to go in all the way. So just make sure it's in seated all the way, close up our cover. We'll go over to the driver's side, make sure the switch is in the on position, and we'll test our boards. So with our switch in the on position, we can see that the, the green LED indicator is going to be on. So we know we're at least getting power there. So real quick test, we're just going to go through, open our door. We can see that the steps did deploy, close our door, and they do retract. Now I'm going to go through and do that for each individual door, making sure each sensor is working on both sides and then once we know everything's working then we can take that extra time to clean up all these wires put those panels back in place and really make it nice looking whenever you're putting your panels back and you're securing all your wiring you want to make sure to secure that brain box underneath the passenger rear seat even if it is just using a couple zip ties to tie it to the seat brackets that's what i did we just don't want it bouncing around causing any issues down the road and don't forget to put that plastic plug back in on the driver's side firewall. That way we don't have to hear all that engine noise or have any leaks coming into the cabin of our Jeep. But once you have all that buttoned up, everything's tidy and looking nice, that'll finish up your installation and your look at the Aries Action Track Motorized Running Boards on our 2019 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited.